Hi and welcome to the Homeopathy Health Show. I'm Atik Ahmad Bharti, a fourth generation homeopath with over 25 years of professional experience and practice in this field of healing. The Homeopathy Health Show is the online voice of homeopathy around the world, promoting and raising awareness of this truly unique system of healing, which is suitable for all ages, young and old. Every week I invite guests from the world of homeopathy to come and share their experiences, their work, offer insights and essentially talk all things homeopathy. Why not visit www.liketreatslike.co.uk and click on the radio and podcast button to listen to the latest episodes. So let's begin today's show here on UK Health Radio, the world's number one talk health radio. Hi and welcome to another episode of the Homeopathy Health Show here on UK Health Radio. Now, I'm more excited than a dose of Adrenaline 200 can help me with, as I welcome Kim Elia and Julian Shareda McKenna to part two of this two-part special podcast on the film Introducing Homeopathy. Now, if that wasn't exciting enough, I also have news of a very special three-part Insta Live coming up very soon with some of the core team members via my companion series to this podcast called Homeopathic Voices from Around the World, which you can find uh, on my Instagram, which is at like underscore treats like. Now, uh, the first of these three parts will be with Carol Boyce from the core team of the film, and this is Sunday the 18th of February, and this will be followed by Isabel Wells on Monday the 19th, and the producer himself, Kim Alia will be on Tuesday, February the 20th. So in the meantime, if you have any questions, please get in touch, send me the questions, and uh, the core team members would absolutely love to answer your questions on air. Now back to my guests, of course. Now, Kim Elia, as you will very well know, is the producer for the upcoming film Introducing Homeopathy, which will have its first... uh, broadcast as such, which will be played at um, Reston, Virginia, on the occasion of the Joint American Homeopathic Conference. And this will be on Friday, the 19th of April. And I'm also joined by Julian Shredder McKenna, who is the filmmaker with some incredible skills. And I say that truly because I've seen some of the trailers and boy, are you in for a shock and a surprise. And it's truly going to be life changing indeed. So, uh, gentlemen, absolute honor to have you back uh julian first time of many i hope um th- thank you so much for joining me today thank you thank for having you. us it means yeah the thank you Atik. thank you for all the support you've shown for this project it's yeah. really great appreciated i i love it i love your enthusiasm i love everything the film stands for i love the passion and the work and the zeal and the commitment that's going into it i love promoting it i love how people are getting on to this uh huge ship and they're talking about it i literally know people are calling me up about it and they're talking about it when is it out what's going on how can we help and you know that in itself is so good for the world of homeopathy right no question about it and i have to say it's been um, amazing to watch the social media channel grow uh for all of you who are not following it if um uh, if you'd like to follow it, it's introducing homeopathy or at introducing homeopathy on Instagram. But um, it's been amazing because um, let's see, before you started uh, promoting it, the following might have been in the couple thousands and and now it's almost close to five. I know you are a huge part to do with that. So uh, really, thank you very much. Oh, that's very kind of you. Thank you. Yeah. It's a, it's a great honor for me to, to just be involved, you know, and uh, I, I love it. And uh, I, I just think it's so, so important. And, and we're obviously going to go in that, uh, into that in further detail today on what this film really stands for and its objectives. But uh, before we do that, I actually wanted to ask you, how's it going? Because we've got a few months left. This podcast will be out. Um, and then after that, there's a few weeks left, really. I suppose you could say six to eight weeks, perhaps. 
I, I hope I'm not making you, <laughs> you nervous about that. But... <laughs> I, I, it looks like Julian's perspiring. I can't tell. <laughs> Can you see the uh, the sweat beating down? <laughs> um, well, I'll answer first, and then I'll let Julian share a little bit. So, you know, we've we've collected an immense amount of footage. I don't know, something like 130, 140 hours worth of footage. We've interviewed, you know, 150 or so people, many medical doctors, naturopathic doctors, physicists, PhDs, Nobel Prize winners. And we're now at the point of getting all this information and seeing how to organize it. I mean, we have such a wealth of information and really amazing patient stories as well, which I think is really going to drive the narrative forward. I mean, we've got patients whose lives are completely transformed through the use of homeopathy. And I think these will really move people emotionally. So we're basically at the point now where we're getting together, we're, we're taking all these various video clips, we're, we're choosing the best pieces, we're organizing them in a way that where the narrative makes sense and, and tells a really uh, compelling story. And um, we expect to be done, um, well, at least to have a rough cut by the end of February and a final cut by the end of of, uh, of March. And it will, as you said, be premiered on April, Friday, April 19th at the uh, Joint American Homeopathic Conference in Western Virginia. Julian, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, one of the coolest things, um, this is a little bit of a sneak preview behind the scenes for everybody watching. So one of the things that we're opening the movie with is a journey we're calling the physician's journey right now, where we follow four physicians, all um, MD, PhD level, who have had a transformation in their lives uh, with, with homeopathic care. And it's very interesting to open the movie from that perspective, because you see people really grounded from, you know, the good old fashioned medical field, experiencing this profound change. And I have to say, watching the rough cuts. Um, it's been very emotional for all of us. I think all of us are watching it and really, really realizing the power of, of what we're doing here. Um, so it's been a, a revelation for me to see come to life, even though, you know, we're the ones behind the keyboards actually putting all the pieces together. You mm -hmm. still feel like you're actually watching it come to life, which is very, very special. Yeah, totally. I, I want to echo what he said, because Julian sent us a clip yesterday from the physician segment, and I was crying by the end of it. It was only three or four minutes long, and I was totally weeping. And um, I mean, these are really powerful stories. There's one story of a woman who went to naturopathic college, and because homeopathy was being offered and because of potentized medicines, you know, high dilution medicine, she thought that was so crazy that she decided to actually quit naturopathic college altogether. And then somehow she got treated homeopathically and her chronic health issue got resolved. And not only did she continue naturopathic studies, but she she actually focused on homeopathy as her uh, primary uh, principal core, or core approach. So, I mean, these are just really powerful stories. Amazing, amazing. And, and you can just well imagine for those who are not literally doing the groundwork, how incredible it's going to be to see it firsthand, um, to be able to to watch it the first time over. And I think it's going to really open the door to, I think, you know, the, the greatest success, even greater than it is already, yeah. of homeopathy around the world. It's so, so needed. And like I've said many times, I, I firmly believe 2024 to be the year of homeopathy. And, you know, it's it's not just I wish, but together we can actually make that happen. Why not? No question Absolutely. about it. Working together, we can make everything happen. Saying, I love uh, that you're calling it the year of homeopathy because it's the perfect double entendre. Homeopathy being the title of the film, and and this being the year of homeopathy. I think that's a really, really brilliant, brilliant plug. And the fact that it's actually called introducing homeopathy. So it's 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 going to be a beautiful um, a beautiful marriage, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> It's uh, interesting to note, isn't it, that um, at the moment, just under 10 percent, and this, by the way, by the way, when I say this, is huge, out of the total world population, approximately under 10 percent of people are using homeopathy, which I think is, is huge. But um, going forward, Kim, what do you feel that with the introduction of this film, and I know for sure it will be well received, certainly by the homeopathic 
homeopathic community and and also the those into natural healing per se. But do you think it's it's really going to skyrocket? This isn't it? This this percentile as far as people, perhaps not necessarily using it, but being fully aware of what homeopathy is, or certainly the potential that it has. Sure. Sure. Well, you know, when you say that percentage, uh, I think you said earlier on when we spoke that the percentage was around 7%. Hmm. Now, that's obviously quite large because, you know, what is there, like 7, 8 billion people on the planet now? So 7% hmm. of that's, you know, it's like over 500 million people. 500 million people are using homeopathy. That's a lot of people. And yet, at the same time, it means that there's more than 7 billion people who don't are not using homeopathy or don't even know anything about homeopathy. And that's a lot of people who could benefit from this amazing system of medicine. So uh, I don't know that we're going to get 100% of the people on the planet using homeopathy, but I would hope that we will significantly increase that percentage and that we'll see 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or maybe even 70 or 80% of the world population want to use homeopathy because it's cost effective, it's safe, it's powerful. It doesn't cost a lot of money. Uh, it it is the medicine of the people, and people deserve to have the uh, opportunity to use it. One of the fascinating things for me as an outsider, especially compiling all the interviews and gathering the data that we did for the film, has been realizing that it's the countries that have a vested interest uh, because their system, you know, is their the healthcare system is nationalized in keeping their costs down that really have embraced homeopathy and. Echoing what Kim said, homeopathy has been shown to reduce costs, reduce the amount of drugs that you need all across the board. Um, and there are very well respected studies conducted in France, for instance, showing this. So it's fascinating to see that countries like France, countries like Germany, where the systems are nat nationalized and the general public is actually sharing the burden of the responsibility of everybody's health outcomes. They're the countries that have embraced homeopathy. What I would love to do, you know, one of my agendas from the beginning with this agenda is not necessarily the right word, but one of my passions uh, with this has been showing countries that don't necessarily have that nationalized system, how really all of us are sharing in that burden. And if you look at the United States healthcare system, for instance, just by virtue of having insurance and paying for your own insurance premium, you really are sharing in the health outcomes of everybody that's within your health payer group. Hmm. So if we can paint that picture and make people see how interconnected everyone's health is, and it's, it's interesting for me because obviously homeopathy looks at the body from a global perspective, you know, looks at your health from a whole body perspective. I would love to be able to look at health from a country perspective or from a planetary perspective and show how increasing our health across the board actually has a real tangible benefit for everybody. And getting that kind of idea across has the real potential to move the needle for anybody in any jurisdiction that sees this. So for me, it's less about the percentages of the population and more about showing them the potential, and then watching the percentages come in, therefore. You know, I, I was talking to um, Jock Gaudet Kathiasa, who's a, an Australian Balinese homeopath, and he has a clinic in Bali uh, called the Tirtla Osara Clinic, and he said that 90%, 95% of the people in Bali grow up with natural medicine. So for them, getting sick is a no-brainer. It's like we get sick, deal with it, and this is what they will use. Whatever it is, you know, the, the plants, herbs, etc. We all know about India because homeopathy is so integrated into healthcare. Uh, you've got MDs, and then you've got MD homes as well, which are the, the doctors of homeopathy, and it's booming. But it's going to be so fascinating to see how this transpires over the next sort of couple of years, where other countries can come on board and integrate. And in fact, Kim said something very wonderful in the I believe it was in the last podcast which was to do with the fact that it's about introducing homeopathy literally as as a system of medicine but alongside it's not like here we are this is going to replace everything that we have but it's like here's how we can integrate it this is healthcare one of the things that we bring out in the film uh, this is a point that Julian wanted to emphasize quite a bit was something called effective 
situations. And there is all kinds of conditions for which conventional medicine does not have any type of solution for. Yes, you know, if you get hit by a bus or you need emergency medical procedures, it's wonderful to have hospitals. It's wonderful to have modern medical technology. All these things are, are fabulous. But there are many, many health issues for which Conventional medicine does not have any answers whatsoever. And in many cases, homeopathy does have answers for many of these different conditions. And you can imagine that there are many medical physicians around the world who want to help their patients, but don't have the tools, the resources to do it. And homeopathy offers an opportunity for them to utilize tools which can help all of these individuals for which conventional medicine does not currently have an answer. Yeah. Kim said it beautifully, but um, if you think of the word, the medical system, it, it almost feels like this very, um, you know, in, in, intense concept, right? But if you actually break it down to its simple form, the medical system is really just a umbrella for all of the perspectives of the practitioners that are doing their absolute best to offer a standard of care for everyone. And those practitioners really only have a certain amount of information available to them. You know, all of the information that they've collected over the course of medical school, naturopathic college, whatever it is. If we consider that and we consider how homeopathy just offers more of a perspective on the potential for care, then integration makes complete sense because we're just shining more light to treat more potential ailments. You know, I think what both of you have said is so beautiful and so eloquent because we sometimes, even as, as a homeopath, sometimes can can miss something so simple that it, it's not it's not about that. It's about the greater good and the benefits and how it can add so much value, literally, truly, to healthcare. It's the value element, isn't it? And it's the fact that because it's so... I, you know, we we often use this word, it's simple, but it's actually very, very complex when you have a patient in front of you because you're treating them holistically, you know, mind, body, spirit. You're looking at uh, observing their personalities, their traits, their likes, their dislikes. But generally speaking, it's it's a lot simpler um, as a process, you could say. And and there's so much value add. It's incredible, you know. And I just wonder that when that time comes, and I'm confident it will come, um, especially with with things that are, are transpiring, which includes, of course, introducing homeopathy, the film that that, that you're working on is um, it's going to make such a big difference to people's lives because you know there's always a fear when we get sick. There there, there is a fear, and sometimes there's panic, and sometimes it, you know oof, it just goes wild. You know, what shall we do? How can we do it? And I often wonder that sometimes some of the perhaps you could say complex diseases which are not actually that complex when you break them down can be so easily treatable. So homeopathy ultimately is adding so much value to healthcare and it's going to save time for the professionals to carry on as they are. Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt about it. I mean, that's one of the things about this film is we're essentially trying to make a grand argument for why homeopathy should be incorporated in every healthcare system around the planet. And that's a really easy task because there are so many amazing benefits to homeopathy from cost to efficacy to the fact that it doesn't cause harm for most people. You know, I mean, there are, the benefits are just there's a plethora of benefits associated with homeopathy. So it's very easy to make a film about it. Well, picture the future too. When, when you have exposure to a subject, that attention brings things like funding. It brings things like research. And, you know, right now, if you look at the conventional field, if you want to release a new drug on the market, sometimes there's a billion dollars worth of research and attention that goes into that. Imagine if homeopathy was playing on that same scale. Imagine the technologies that could be created because I, in, in my mind, and again, I'm a lay person, right? But I feel like we truly haven't even begun to scratch the surface of the potential for medicine. You know, and if you think of homeopathy in a crude lay person's conception as medicine based on physics, whereas other modalities might be based on biology and chemistry. 
just just saying that out loud, imagine the potential there. It almost puts us on the level of Star Trek or something like that. If you project <laughs> forward a hundred years, yeah. Kim Kim can be what Picard or Kirk? I don't know which one. <laughs> Say that again. Kim can you can be either Picard or um, yeah yeah Kirk. yeah Scotty. <laughs> he's he's definitely more he's definitely more Kirk. He's got too much hair for Picard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant! It's quite funny that you said that because just yesterday it was a rerun of one of the old Star Trek films, uh, The Wrath of Khan, I think it was. Oh yeah, and yeah. I was watching that, and I thought I used to. I grew up with Captain Kirk. I mean, not literally, obviously, but you know, watching. <laughs> You go way back. <laughs> yeah, I'm older. Well, than that's I that's one of the better ones. Too. One of the better movies was Wrath of Khan. That was a really good film. Yeah, absolutely, it was. Uh, Kim, I was going to ask you. Uh, people will probably have asked you this as well, but what was that moment in your life that you thought, you know, what we need a film? I mean, did it was it something organic or was it something happened that you thought, let's try and do something like this because, you know, it's not. I could say it's unique. I know there have been a few other movies, but nothing on this scale, certainly. Well, that's an interesting question because the truth, Artik, is that I've been wanting to make a documentary for many, many years. I have all these ideas. The problem is I don't have the necessary skills to do it. You know, I needed to mm. I needed to team up with somebody who knows how to make movies. I don't know how to do that. So I was very fortunate in that I came into contact with Julian and we worked on a different project and uh, he made some short videos for us and they were so well done. I mean, they were so professional that I realized that he had the requisite skills that I didn't have. And so I approached him and I said, look, why don't we get together and make a film, a documentary film about homeopathy? And he was very enthusiastic about that. I don't, he hasn't mentioned it or you haven't mentioned it yet, but, you know, uh, Julian's father is an acupuncturist. So he's very sympathetic to natural and energetic medicine. And when I proposed to him the idea of making a documentary film, he was extremely, extremely enthusiastic. And so that's really how it came about. Um, Julian, I don't know if you want to say anything about that. but uh, No, it's been a, an interesting mission for me because I've watched the current change um, versus my father's career over the course of my life. And it was very interesting when we were traveling in, in Europe growing up, he was lecturing all over the world uh, to European MDs, teaching them very high level concepts with acupuncture. And when we got back to the States, uh, it was fascinating to see how there was just a bit of a, a shift and it, it wasn't necessarily always op opposing but it was interesting to see how you go to different places and there are definitely different viewpoints based on exposure to different concepts. So for me, you know, I really want to be able to enlighten people to new concepts. The the um, thesis of our company, you know, really is to shine light on new markets, to shine light on the potential for anything and and to tell stories that bring those to life. And it was very interesting when we started circling the wagons, you know, with Kim talking about this, it just made all of the sense in the world. And it's, I don't know, it almost seems, it almost seemed too good to be true at first, you know, with, with me having a background with them, um, you, you know, being very excited about making a movie. I kept wondering, you know, is this, is this really going to happen? And Kim is a absolute wizard at pulling everything together. I mean, it, it, um, it happened very very quickly and we were able to gather really a who's who of you know the homeopathic talent in the states to to be contributors to this uh you know in terms of thought leadership so it's been been very wonderful i i know kim to be a wizard because um dr laurie grossman was on one of my insta lives recently and we were talking about introducing homeopathy and uh she was also saying how instrumental you were actually in in formulating certain things uh, so yeah, it's it's so good to have someone with a vision, and indeed, I think uh, I, I don't want to embarrass Kim, but it's a visionary. He's a visionary, and you know, we this is what we so much need. You know, this is a, well, it's you a know, uniting the, the, moment. Yeah, but the truth is that it, you know, okay, maybe I had the initial idea or vision. 
but it's really been everyone coming together that has made this project possible, including you, Atik, Julian, all of the volunteers, my wife, Mickey, uh, Carol Boyce. I mean, uh, Marcy Mearns. There have been so many people who've come together and who've shown support for this particular project financially, uh, in terms of their talents. I mean, it's really been a godsend and very easy, actually, because there's been so much support. Julian, I was going to ask you, actually, because you were talking about, you know, uh, getting involved here. So what what's it been like so far? Um, it, I mean, is it wrapped? The filming's a wrap, right? It's just the editing process now, post-production or? We're, we're really in editing. I would say maybe we might do one or two more pickup shoot days. Um, actually, funny enough, um, Ben, who's one of the cinematographers and directors on my team, is actually shooting right now as we speak in San Diego with a couple of the patients whose transformational journeys we're following over the course of the film. But in terms of the major filming, we're, we're really wrapped from the bulk of the interviews. We're just doing a few odds and ends here to bring it to life. Um, but... Yeah. I was going to say, Julie didn't tell you the whole story because uh, some of our, some of the patients in the film were surfers who, because of their health issues, weren't able to surf any longer. So we actually actually had them all now that they're healthy through homeopathy. We all have them out on the ocean on surfboards. <laughs> so that's that's proof, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, that's uh, it. How did how have you found um, how have you found that process? Because I know you've been flying here, there, and everywhere. So over and above the jet lag itself. How how's that process been personally to you? What, what would you say sharing that experience? It's an interesting question. Um, I the the most fascinating thing for me actually started on the first day that we did interviews, and the the first day we did inter interviews was at uh, the JHC in twenty twenty two. We set up an interview room in a suite and we conducted something like 40 interviews over the course of three days. It was a you know a lot, a lot of interviews. But what struck me immediately was how eloquent the community was, actually, from the earliest, you know, year one homeopathic student to people that had been in the industry for 40 years. And when you see something like that, it's actually very rare to encounter that. And again, we make hundreds and hundreds of film projects throughout the year. We interview hundreds and hundreds of people. Oftentimes, you have to extract the information out of them or do things to make them feel comfortable, make them not nervous on camera, all of these little tips and tricks. It was wild with the homeopaths because everybody had a very compelling story to share and everybody was very, very calculated and eloquent. Not, calculated is the wrong word, but very collected and eloquent when they shared their stories. And it struck me that when you have something like that, there is a there there, if, if you know the expression. There's, there's something there that warrants making this into a real project, making it mm -hmm. into a film and sharing that story. And it, it just occurred to me that you know, hearing it, this is a story that needs to be told. You know, I recently, over the last few days, I've been watching a lot of the films from a particular um, bucket called uh, The Journey, which are basically all the patient stories. And this is a lot of the interviews that Julian is referring to. Hmm. And as we listen to these stories, they are so powerful and so moving. And the reason that they're so powerful and so moving is because these are genuine stories of people's lives being transformed through homeopathy. And you can tell it's totally sincere. They're not acting that these small little pills that came out of that bottle completely changed their lives, completely changed their lives. And because of that transformation, they decided to go on and study homeopathy or practice homeopathy. That's very powerful to hear that. And a lot of these people were skeptics on top of it. They didn't believe in homeopathy. They 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 did it because a friend recommended it or something. And then it turned out miraculous. So um when you hear stories like that, uh that will make a shift in the culture yeah. because it's real. You know, you're you're not having an actor coming up and you know, as good as the actor might be, you know, read from a script. These are real life-changing stories that people are sharing. I was going to ask you, actually, this takes me on to um, education and and also ignorance, but I'd be in a very positive way. There are many who are not aware of 
what homeopathy is. There are some who may be aware but have perhaps read some somewhere that perhaps it's not, you know, oh, homeopathy might be this or might be that. Um, which is like that. It's not just homeopathy. It's for, for every subject matter or anything in the world, you know. Um, but how do you feel as far as from an educational perspective this film will, will impact uh, those watching? Because it's going to be watched by millions uh, of people, I hope. Yeah, that's a great question. You know, we we have strived throughout this film not to dumb it down, to keep it at the highest level of science and the highest level of epistemology. And we, of course, the film is directed towards the general public, but it is also targeted as well to the scientific and medical community. We have not dumbed it down and we are hoping to educate not just the general public, but the scientific community itself as to why homeopathy should be investigated further. Yeah, it's interesting because in, in Hollywood, the tides are changing. The prevailing thought even 20 years ago, 10 years ago, was that if you're releasing something for the general public, it has to be very dumbed down to use those words but the consumer and the film consumer really is changing the uh, the internet smartphones have brought a wealth of information into people's pockets and because of that they watch in a much more savvy way than they ever have and if you watch any of the slate from netflix to hbo amazon apple tv any of these you really see how the quality of the content is becoming more unapologetic in that space. And we all decided collectively from the beginning, actually, when we put the project together, that we really wouldn't pander to any of that old model of thinking. We wanted to make this something that if you're an MD level person who is watching this, you really can glean valuable information that doesn't feel like you're being talked down to that you can actually take home and apply in your own practice. And, and, and I think that that's, you know, if, if we can reach people in the medical field that can then actually start using this and applying it in the right way, we've won the game. That's so eloquently put. And I think it's so beautiful as well, because ultimately what you're saying is this film introducing homeopathy is really for everybody and anybody. You can watch it as a family you can be a professor at a uni and you can at a university rather uh, we use uni for short in the uk um but you can be a <laughs> professor at the university i only know uni as a as a as a japanese uh, dish that you get you know with on the giri oh is it okay uh hey uh, that okay well that's the end of that podcast <laughs> uh, you threw me off my uh, my, my sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, but I'm have to ask you because you touched upon it. How's the food? Is nice, right? Japanese food. Oh, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, now, do you know uni is sea urchin i don't know if you know that but that's what it is oh no i didn't i didn't yeah. i just know it as where where the students go to study <laughs> 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 but yeah so the um it it's interesting with that you know with the, this film documentary which is and and you could say you could argue each documentary is educational but this is so much more isn't it it's so much more about hey look here's something that's been around for over 200 years you know, 500 million, for example, people are using it. But this is a science behind it. This is what it's doing as far as life changing. And just have an open mind before you watch the movie, before you watch the documentary itself, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's a real, you know, it's a real trick to educate people in such a way that you, while you're entertaining them at the same time. Mm. And that's really what we hope to achieve in this film. Because yes, I mean, we have to cover information which might seem a little bit dry, that has, you know, it's historical in nature or things. From, but um, we are going to make it very entertaining, humorous, emotionally compelling. And the patient stories will, of course, drive the narrative forward. Now, we all know that the 80s was the best time on the planet. <laughs> the 80s, I agree. Uh, yeah, thank you, Julian. So I hope you've Is that because some... Julian was born in the 80s? Is that why? That's 100% correct. How did you know? What, what tipped it off? <laughs> How will they know, eh? <laughs> I want to ask you, are you going to have some 80s music in there? 
<laughs> I was, I was going to petition. We're, we're going to contact the Bee Gees. We'll contact the Bee Gees and see if we can get Saturday Absolutely. night. Absolutely. Get them Super Tramp. Aha, uh -huh, you know all these. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I think uh, we need Michael McDonald, honestly. If, yeah. if we Michael McDonald, it's going to be an Oscar winner. <laughs> Why now, Kim and Julian? Why do you think the time is now for this film? Why yeah, at that's this a great, moment? Great, great question. Well, I think, you know, a lot of people have become disenchanted with the current medical system or at least what it's offering in certain areas. So people are looking for alternatives at the present moment. And a lot of people don't yet know about homeopathy. So it's a golden opportunity to introduce them to this amazing system of therapeutics that can help many people who literally don't know about it yet. So I think from, from that perspective, it's a, it's a really uh, opportune time to introduce this. And I think the, I think the uh, consciousness is such now that the public is receptive to it in a way that previously it might not have been. So I think that people are much more open to the possibilities of looking at alternatives at the present moment, especially after what has transpired over the last few years. Also, yeah. you know, there, there I, let me just say one more thing. There, there have been documentaries that have been made before about homeopathy, and they're and they're good. Um, the particular approach that these previous documentaries used was to create uh, what's called a foil. So in other words, they would have advocates of homeopathy contrasted with skeptics of homeopathy. And that's a, an approach you can use in making a documentary film. The problem for me personally was that uh, in these previous films, somebody would say something very positive about homeopathy, and then immediately there would be a medical doctor who would come in and say, well, it's not plausible and poo-poo the whole idea. And... Um, you know, that really didn't convince or persuade anybody about wanting to further investigate homeopathy. So we're avoiding that altogether. We're simply talking about all of the reasons that somebody should look further into using homeopathy in their own personal lives. Yeah. The general public almost had to catch up with conceptually how brilliant homeopathy was. When it came out, it was in, maybe not ahead of its time. It was of its time. But when it came out, in a lot of ways, it really was very far ahead of the language, uh, you know, that, that could even describe what's happening. And it feels like the general public finally has enough of a frame of reference, a context to understand the concepts that are happening, you know, when you apply homeopathic medication and I think when you have those things line up, when the public is ready for it, you know, you can actually make uh, a mark and move the needle and, and really we're lining up perfectly to do that. Julian, you remind me of Owen Wilson when you speak. <laughs> it's very common. You know, it's very funny. That is, uh, that's not the, that's not the first time I've heard that. Oh, uh, it could very well be that we both have crooked noses. He's, he's a bit of a crooked nose. I have a crooked nose. So maybe there's a little bit of a overlap. I've but, got uh, glasses on. I still can't see. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we'll also, all, all jokes aside, I think also we're we're both uh, from Texas. So there may be a little bit of an overlap. Interesting. In the all there. It's a very calming voice. I appreciate that. That's very nice of you to say. I find yours the same. <laughs> No comment. <laughs> hey, what about my voice? <laughs> well, you're a visionary, so there's no. Oh, I don't I need can a good say. voice. <laughs> <laughs> you are the voice of the yeah. film, but uh, I was going to ask you, um, defining moments so far. I know there's still a lot to be done, but are there any real defining moments that you've encountered um, during the making of this film, which has really sort of left an impression on uh, on you? There's an interesting moment. Um, so we went to Cambridge University uh, Uni in, in uh, the UK, and we were meeting there with uh, Alex Turnier, who is a Cambridge alum, actually, um, and uh, one of the heads of the Homeopathic Research Institute, um, as well as Brian Josephson, who is a Nobel laureate and a professor at Cambridge. And it was interesting, we were getting on to the property um, 
uh, of Trinity College, one of the most esteemed colleges actually uh, within Cambridge. And we're driving on, we're going through these beautiful gates. I actually have a video of going through those gates, Atik, that I can send you maybe to do a, a little post with. I'd love to, yeah. And as we're doing that, um, a couple of the security guards and earpieces converge on the car. And we mentioned that we're there with Professor Brian Josephson and they go, oh, oh, uh, absolutely right this way. So in, in this very, you know, esteemed academic setting, we really got the red carpet treatment for for what we're doing. And again, it's I wouldn't necessarily say it was defining like I knew then and there, you know, we had something, but it it's moments like that just because of, you know, all the lore of Cambridge University a Nobel Prize weren't all of these things, you know, just kind of in the back of my head. I, I kept saying to myself, you know, my God, we really, really do. We really do have something. It's very special. You know, I, I would say that there, for me personally, there isn't one defining moment. There's a million defining mm -hmm. moments. And really what was most defining for me was just the amazing amount of support that the community has offered. I mean, literally, Every school, every pharmacy, every organization has come forward and lended their support in a variety of different ways, financially or other ways. And to me, that's been what's been most inspiring is to see everyone come together to cooperate towards a common good, you know, to work together towards the common aims of humankind. And in this case, uh, to help expose homeopathy to a larger percentage of the world population. I was going to ask you about the distribution. So the premiere um, or the first screening certainly is, is, as we've mentioned, in Reston, Virginia at the JAHC on April 19th. And then what's the process? Uh, the question that I'm often asked is uh, from even from patients, because I'm, obviously you can imagine I'm talking to everybody about it, is when do we get to see it? So, yeah, let me answer that. And then, Julian, I'll let you speak a little bit about Netflix or anything, so, things of that nature. But uh, basically, it's going to be premiered uh, at the Joint American Homeopathic Conference on April 19th, if you want to attend, you can either pay $65 and attend the live event, which includes hors d'oeuvres and, and meeting the, the principal people who are involved in the film. A lot of the actors will be there. Julian will be there. I'll be there. Carol, I don't know if Carol will be there, but many people will be there for sure. Um, or if you simply attend the Joint American Homeopathic Conference, then you get to participate in that Friday event free of charge. Hmm. If you cannot travel to the United States for whatever reason, we will be streaming on that same day, April 19th, the event. Uh, there will be a, a $25 charge, $25 U.S. charge for that. But we encourage people to have house parties, to get together with a group of your friends or family members and actually watch the film together. And that way you can share it with a whole group of individuals. Yeah. Oh, or that's, even that's a good that idea, are... actually. I, I Sorry, yeah. Julian. I was just going to say that's such a good idea, isn't it? We can have a, a, a homeopathic, a homeopathy connected uh, get together at home, you know? Yes. Yeah. Even people that aren't necessarily convinced about homeopathy, bring your enemies over. Yeah. Because maybe when they watch this film, it'll really be the sea change for them. Wonderful. And um, further afield, um, how how is there going to be, as far as the distribution of the film, and, and then are you going to perhaps uh, showcase it and travel and showcase it? Or once it's out on, on stream, it's it's there? So uh, a lot of that will have to do with the final deal with the networks. Right now, we're weighing a few different network options. The two um, that are, you know, in our highest sites are uh, to be featured as a Netflix original and on the other side, potentially to be featured as an Amazon original. Um, we just got a Bible of, uh, I think, 49 legal documents from Netflix that we have to get in order for our official submission to them. So it's um, quite a involved process to actually, you know, get, get onto the platform. Mm -hmm. But um, as, as soon as all of that uh, is worked out and likely in terms of time window, it might align that we'll be able to at the JHC also make an announcement for 
um, you know, our potential ultimate launch, uh, or at least, you know, be able to announce that we're getting close and kind of a wink, wink, nudge, nudge announcement. But, um, but uh, all, all of it will really snowball at the same time. And Julian, what about the film festivals? We'll be going to those as well. Yes, um, it's uh, a lot of that, again, will be at the discretion of the networks, um, depending on the ultimate deal and if they would like to promote it. But uh, personally, I will be attending uh, Con this year. I'll have um, a booth with uh, a couple other fellow filmmakers. Um, so I would love to actually start really promoting it through those channels when I'm there. And um, my hope, my real strong hope, is that I'll be able at that booth to have the force of the ultimate network that we settle with behind me so that we can really shake a lot of hands and kiss a lot of babies. Sounds great. Uh, gentlemen, it's been an absolute uh, pleasure and honor to have you on. And um, of course, uh, Kim, I will see you very soon for the Insta Live as well. And I look forward to it. And in fact, actually, Julian, I would take this opportunity to invite you to uh, the Insta Live. And I will share some dates with you. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much. I leave you with your parting thoughts. Well, I just want to thank you, Atik, for all your support and hard work in making this and promoting this film. And we really appreciate it. Again, I just want to say this this isn't something that, can, that one person can do. This can only happen when a group of people with a collective vision come together and say we want to do something good for the world. Thank you so very much. Atik, I really appreciate your time and the conversation. But to uh, everybody watching, please, um, please, please go and follow uh, the film on Instagram at Introducing Homeopathy. One of the things when we um, have our meetings with the network that they really will pay attention to is actually how many people are following us on social media. So tell your grandma, tell your husband. <laughs> um, but but uh, all, all jokes aside, Atik, thank you very much for having us. It's an honor as well. Thank yeah, you. and please thank visit you. us at introducinghomeopathy.com. And if you can make a financial donation, it's greatly appreciated. For those listening, there will be many, many listening. Uh, please do subscribe to the Instagram. But it's also available on Facebook. So in Introducing Homeopathy, the handle is at Introducing Homeopathy on Facebook. Facebook, but uh, Instagram is uh, at Introducing Homeopathy as well. Please follow both if you can. Uh, it's really, really important that we work together and we really hold hands and unite to really get this, um, to make it, an, let's just say, an eye-opening, uh, an eye-opening success around the world. And uh, individually, we can achieve things, but collectively, we can achieve great things. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rajiv. Thank you. I do hope you've enjoyed this week's episode of the Homeopathy Health Show. Please do support the show by clicking follow on my socials. Remember, the more exposure the podcast receives, the better for homeopathy around the world. You can find me on Instagram by searching for at like underscore treats like and on both Facebook and TikTok by searching for at like treats like. So let's promote the voice of homeopathy on radio and podcast around the world together. Don't forget to visit me online at www.liketreatslike.co.uk and click on the radio and podcast tab. Here you'll be able to see all the guests that have joined me on the show so far. And of course, you can stream on demand the latest episode to your mobile, tablet or PC. Until next time, stay safe and take care. <laughs>